Expand your vocabulary with our Core 2000 Words eBook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Urdu eBook before it's gone. When learning a new language, everyone should have an ultimate goal to work towards. Whether you want to be able to connect with a relative, easily order food while traveling, or go somewhere new, having an end goal for your learning can be very motivating. A popular but challenging goal is being able to speak like a native speaker. It's difficult to measure exactly when you reach this goal, and it's not something you can pick up using textbooks alone. So how do you work on making your speech more natural? That's what we're going to look at today. Here are three tips to help you practice talking like a native speaker. Number one, focus on vocabulary. If your goal is to speak like a native, you might be really focused on speaking quickly or using as many complex grammar patterns as possible. But in our native languages, we're not always trying to speak as fast as possible. And we use complex grammar patterns when necessary, not to show off. Vocabulary, however, is extremely important to expressing ourselves naturally. Your choice of words can reveal a lot about you and your understanding of the language. Most learners have had the experience of using a phrasebook or a dictionary to find a word they want to use, trying the word in conversation, and getting a look of confusion from the native speaker. In some cases, although your word choice may be grammatically correct, the word may be inappropriate for the situation or totally unnatural. This is especially important in business and other formal situations where the right level of formality and professionalism is key. Being able to understand nuances in vocabulary words can also help you understand relationships between people just by listening to the conversation. Try to listen to many different types of conversations. Listen to how people talk to their friends, their superiors, and in customer service situations. This will give you a better idea of how to talk to others naturally. In some languages, you can omit words from sentences or use more direct communication styles. It's important to be aware of these things so you can apply them yourself. Colloquialisms and slang are also commonly used in most languages. As this sort of vocabulary is always evolving, it can be difficult to keep up with the latest words. Talk with native speakers and consume media in your target language to make sure you pick up these kinds of expressions. Media is a great resource for your learning. Ultimately, knowing the appropriate vocabulary to use for each situation will really help you sound more knowledgeable. Number two, perfect your accent. With every language, there are unique pronunciation and intonation challenges. Some languages are tonal languages, and a change in pitch can completely change the meaning of a word. Then there's the fact that most countries have multiple dialects, and so people from one area of the country may sound different from those in another. So what is the best way to listen to a wide range of accents and different pronunciations? Video and audio resources are a great way to do this. YouTube is a perfect place to start because people from all kinds of different backgrounds upload videos to the platform. You can watch educational videos, daily life vlogs, cooking shows, a travel series, whatever interests you. Pay attention to the different ways people speak. Everyone is unique. And then practice speaking like them. This kind of practice can help you sound more natural. One note, please be aware of the type of resources you're using. For example, if you find a video where a speaker uses a rare dialect, it might not be a good idea to use that for your pronunciation practice, unless you have a special reason for studying a specific accent. As a general rule, it's best to try to search for practice resources that use a standard form of the language you're studying. Number three, copy what you hear. Do you remember how you learned to speak as a child? We rarely learned new words just listening to them or reading after we learned how. When we were little kids, we imitated the sounds we heard by repeating the sounds out loud. While you're talking to a friend, watching videos, or listening to audio in your target language, you can do this to try and replicate the way they speak. Doing this will help you work on mastering the flow of the language, your accent, intonation, and pronunciation. Of course, you might also pick up some new vocabulary this way. Make sure to repeat new words often. It's a great way to make sure you remember them. Try doing this using a number of different mediums and sources. That way, you'll be exposed to the diversity that the language offers and master the fundamentals of pronunciation. 
For example, you can watch and imitate several different YouTube videos and audio CDs, but try a few different sources, like different creators or different audio types, to make sure you experience a wide range of communication in your target language. If you're using our language learning program, you can even get your own teacher with Premium Plus. Your teacher can answer questions, give assignments, and even listen to your recordings and give you advice on pronunciation. Completing these kinds of lessons with a native teacher can really boost your confidence in your speaking skills. Becoming able to speak like a native is a popular goal for many people learning a new language. It feels great to be able to communicate smoothly, especially when the people you're talking to expect basic level sentences or broken communication. Try using the tips we've shared in this video to work on improving your speaking skills. Of course, it'll take time and persistence, but the reward will be more natural communication. And for even more tips on speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Assalamu alaikum. Mera naam Afra hai. Aap se milkar khushi hui. Hi, my name is Afra. Nice to meet you. Welcome to urdupod101.com's 3 minute mein Urdu, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Urdu. In this series, you are going to learn basic Urdu expressions. It's super easy and it only takes 3 minutes. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to introduce yourself in Urdu. There are only two sentences you need to know. Assalamu alaikum. Mera naam Afra hai. Aap se milkar khushi hui. Hi, my name is Afra. Nice to meet you. Start by saying Assalamu alaikum. Then say Mera naam, then your name and then say Hai. Please repeat after me. Assalamu alaikum. Mera naam, your name, hai. Finally, say, aap se milkar khushi hui. Aap se milkar khushi hui. Together we have, assalamu alaikum. Mera naam, afra hai. Aap se milkar khushi hui. Let's take a closer look at the first sentence. First is the phrase, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum in Urdu is equivalent to hello. Next is mera, meaning my. This is a way to refer to yourself which can be used by both men and women. Next we have naam, meaning name. Then you say your name and finally we have hai. Hai is attached to the end of the sentence and literally means to exist. In the first sentence, we have the construction mera plus naam plus your name plus hai. The structure of simple Urdu sentences is different from English. In Urdu, the word order is subject, object, verb. The second sentence we have is aap se milkar khushi hui. Aap se milkar khushi hui can be used by both men and women. It means nice to meet you. It is used when meeting someone for the first time. Aap se milkar khushi hui. Aap se milkar khushi hui. Again, all together it is Assalamu alaikum. Mera naam Afra hai. Aap se milkar khushi hui. Now it's time for Afra's advice. Pakistani people do generally shake hands with people of the same gender and often hug them as well. If you're unsure, just say Assalamu alaikum and shake hands with people of the same gender as you. However, in a business situation or with people from the opposite gender, you might refrain from shaking hands. Do you know how we say thank you in Urdu? You will learn how to say this and many other words in the next lesson. Phir milenge. See you then.
Assalamualaikum. Mera naam Afra hai. Hi, my name is Afra. Welcome to UrduPod101.com's Teen Minute Me Urdu, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Urdu. In the last lesson, you learned how to introduce yourself in Urdu. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to use good manners when you thank people. Kya aap tayar hain? Are you ready? To chaliye shuru karein. So let's begin. Saying thank you in Urdu is very easy. It's just one word. Shukriya. Shukriya. Shukriya means thank you. You can emphasize shukriya by adding bohat, which means very much. So it becomes bohat shukriya. Bohat shukriya. Thank you very much. So now you have learned how to say thank you in Urdu. But how will you reply if someone else says thank you to you? In Urdu, you are welcome is sometimes expressed as aapka khair mukaddam hai. Aapka khair mukaddam hai. You can also respond to someone who has thanked you by using another expression. This is koi baat nahi, which literally means it's nothing. Koi baat nahi. Koi baat nahi. So when someone says shukriya to you, you can simply reply with koi baat nahi or aapka khair mukaddam hai. Now it's time for Afra's advice. Pakistanis do not always use the expressions for thank you and you are welcome in everyday situations. It is a concept literally translated from English. Native speakers often show politeness simply by using polite pronouns and verb forms while speaking. Do you know what subha bakhair means? In our next lesson you will learn this and other greetings in Urdu. फिर मिलेंगे सी यू देन असलाम मेरा नाम अफरा है हाई माई नेम इज अफरा वेलकम टू उर्दू पॉड वन ओ वन डॉट कॉम तीन मिनट में उर्दू द फास्टेस्ट इजिएस्ट एंड मोस्ट फन वे टू लर्न उर्दू In the last lesson you learned how to show gratitude to people by saying shukriya. In this lesson you will learn some of the most common greetings used in Pakistan. Kya aap taiyar hain? Are you ready? To chaliye shuru kare. So let's begin. Let's start with a greeting you are sure to have heard before. Assalamu alaikum. This is a phrase that is so closely associated with Pakistan and Islamic culture. that it has become famous all over the world assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum the phrase assalamu alaikum is actually arabic for peace be on you we use it as a formal as well as a friendly greeting it's used when people meet at any time of the day morning noon or evening use this and you will surely impress your pakistani friends in urdu Using different greetings for each time of the day is not very common. When talking to friends, we usually just use the English phrases, but there are equivalent Urdu versions. They are just not used that often. If you meet someone before noon, you can say subha bakhair. Subha bakhair. For later in the day, you can say sham bakhair. Sham bakhair. but most of the time you can just say assalamu alaikum and not worry about it now let's move on to the expressions we use for saying goodbye in urdu a parting expression that we can use for all occasions is phir milenge which means see you phir milenge phir milenge the first word phir means again and the second word milenge means we will meet Let's look at one more expression. Alvida. Alvida is an Urdu word which means farewell. Alvida. Alvida. It is an appropriate choice when parting for a long time or forever. 
Now it's time for Afra's advice. As we learned in this lesson, Assalamu Alaikum can be used at any time of the day. But this all around greeting is not just for saying hello, but for saying goodbye as well. It really is a very useful phrase and you should remember it by heart. In the next lesson, you will learn the meaning of the phrase Kya aap Angrezi bolte hai? Do you already know it? I'll be waiting to tell you about it in our next lesson. Phir milenge. Assalamu alaikum. Mira naam Afra hai. Hi, my name is Afra. Welcome to UrduPod101.com's 3 Minute Me Urdu, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Urdu. In the last lesson, you learned the most common forms of greetings in Urdu. Do you remember them? In this lesson, you are going to learn a very useful phrase Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you are asking it in Urdu, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you are saying, even if their answer is no. Let's start with the formal expression. First though, take note that in Urdu, verbs change depending on the number and gender of the noun. So when asking a man if he speaks English, you would say, Kya aap Angrezi bolte hain? Kya aap Angrezi bolte hain? But to ask a woman if she speaks English, you would say, Kya aap Angrezi bolti hain? Kya aap Angrezi bolti hain? Let's have a closer look. First, we have kya, a question marker which comes at the beginning of the sentence. Next is aap. This is the respectful word for you and is used in formal situations. You should always use it with people you don't know or with elders. Next we have Angrezi, which means English. Next is the verb Bolte, meaning to speak. It is used when the subject is masculine. We use Bolte when the subject is feminine. And finally we have He. He is a sentence ending particle used with aap. Once more, when asking a man, it's kya aap Angrezi bolte hain? And when asking a woman, kya aap Angrezi bolti hain? Now let's make this sentence informal. First, we need to use the informal version of you, which is tum. If we change the word for you, we will also change the sentence ending particle to ho. Everything else stays the same. When speaking to younger people, it's acceptable to use this informal form. In which case, you will say, Kya tum Angrezi bolte ho? To ask a young man or a boy, Kya tum Angrezi bolte ho? And when you're asking a young woman or a girl, you will say, Kya tum Angrezi bolti ho? Kya tum Angrezi bolti ho? The responses you will receive could be one of these three. Ha, yes. Ha, thodi bohat, a little. Thodi bohat. Nahi, no, I don't. Nahi. Now let's review one more time. To ask a man in a formal situation if he speaks English, we would say, Kya aap Angrezi bolte hain? And to ask a woman in a formal situation, we would say, Kya aap Angrezi bolti hain? To ask a man in an informal situation, we would say, Kya tum Angrezi bolte ho? And to ask a woman in an informal situation, we would say, Kya tum Angrezi bolti ho? Now it's time for Afra's advice. Pakistan was once for a long time part of the British Empire. And so today, English is one of the official languages of Pakistan. When visiting tourist areas, you are sure to meet many people who can communicate with you in English. Still, 
a large part of the population cannot understand English and you can never go wrong knowing the local language. How do you say I'm sorry in Urdu? In the next lesson, we will learn ways to apologize. It's never too late to show your good manners with Pakistani people. I'll see you in our next lesson. Phir milenge. Assalamu alaikum. Mera naam Afra hai. Hi, my name is Afra. Welcome to UrduPod101.com. Three minutes mein Urdu. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Urdu. In the last lesson, you learned the phrase Kya aap angrezi bolte hain? Meaning, do you speak English? In this lesson, you are going to learn how to apologize in Urdu. There are a number of ways to apologize. But in a formal situation, you should use Maaf kijiye. Maaf kijiye. The first word Maaf literally means forgive. And kijiye is a polite form of the word meaning please do. So this expression actually means something like forgive me please. Now let's hear it again. Maaf kijiye. Maaf kijiye is used in formal situations when you are communicating with someone you have met for the first time with elders and usually also when communicating with women. It is not used among friends or people who are informal with each other. The informal way to say I am sorry is maaf karo. Maaf karo. Let's review. Maaf kijiye is the formal way to say I am sorry or excuse me. Maaf karo is the informal way to say I am sorry or excuse me. These are all versatile phrases with a few different meanings, depending on the situation. Whether you are trying to get someone's attention for a question or making your way through a crowded area, or apologizing for stepping on someone's foot, these are all phrases you could use. Now imagine someone says maaf kijiye to you after having done something wrong. How would you respond? In this case, the proper phrase is koi baat nahi. Koi baat nahi. This means something like, it doesn't matter. Koi baat nahi. You might remember this phrase from lesson 2. It is the same phrase you can use when responding to someone thanking you. Now it's time for Afra's advice. If someone bumps into you on the streets in Pakistan, don't expect an excuse me, especially in the big cities. Pakistanis are usually very friendly people, but just don't consider excusing themselves for bumping into someone as time well spent. Big crowds are very common in big cities. Unless someone pushes you over so hard you fell on the ground, keep walking. Are you able to count in Urdu? In the next lesson, you will learn the numbers in Urdu from 1 to 10. I'll be waiting for you in our next lesson. Phir milenge. Assalamu alaikum. Mira naam Afra hai. Hi, my name is Afra. Welcome to UrduPod101.com's 3 Minute Me Urdu, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Urdu. In the last lesson, you learned some words used when apologizing in Urdu, including maaf kijiye. In this lesson, you are going to learn numbers in Urdu. Yes, numbers. Tadad. From 1 to 10. And you are going to learn them in only three minutes. Teen minute. Are you ready? Let's start. Ek. Ek. Do. Do. Teen. Teen. Char. Char. Panch. Panch. Che. Che. Saat, Saat, Aat, Aat, No, No, Das, Das. Okay, now repeat after me. I will say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. 
एक दो तीन चार पांच छ सात आठ नौ दस ग्रेट जॉब वॉट इज बिफोर एक डू यू नो इट्स जीरो ऑफ कोर्स विच इन उर्दू इज सिफर सिफर नाउ यू डोंट हैव एनी मोर एक्सक्यूजेज यू कैन गिव योर फ्रेंड्स योर सेल फोन नंबर इन उर्दू लेट्स ट्राई इट टूगेदर टू से माई फोन नंबर इज इन उर्दू फर्स्ट से द फ्रेज मेरा फोन नंबर then say your cell phone number and finally say hey mera phone number your phone number hey for example mera phone number 9025572248 hey can you understand it by yourself नौ सिफर दो पांच पांच सात दो दो चार आठ परफेक्ट नाउ इट्स टाइम फॉर अफरस एडवाइस डिट यू नो दैट इन उर्दू नंबर्स हैव देयर ओन स्क्रिप्ट दैट इज सिमिलर टू द हिंदू अरेबिक न्यूमरल सिस्टम यस दैट्स राइट दे डोंट लुक लाइक द नंबर्स वी आर यूज टू सींग इन द वेस्टर्न वर्ल्ड but with just a little more effort you can not only say the numbers in urdu you will be able to read them as well do you know the urdu word for 100 in the next lesson you are going to learn the numbers from 11 to 100 in urdu your task now is to practice the numbers we studied in this lesson from 8 to 10 phir milenge असलम मेरा नाम अफरा है हाई एवरीबडी माई नेम इज़ अफरा वेलकम टू उर्दू पॉड वन ओ वन डॉट कॉम्स तीन मिनट में उर्दू द फास्टेस्ट ईजीएसट एंड मोस्ट फन वे टू लर्न उर्दू इन द लास्ट लेसन वी लर्न द नंबर्स फ्राम वन टू टेन डू यू रिमेंबर दैम जस्ट इन केस यू हैव फोगॉटन आई एल टेल यू अगेन एक दो तीन चार पाँच छ सात आठ नौ दस एंड नाउ लेट्स कॉन्टिन्यू फ्रॉम इलेवन ग्यारह ग्यारह बारह बारह तेरह तेरह चौदह चौदह पंद्रह पंद्रह सोलह सोलह सत्रह सत्रह अठारह अठारह उन्नीस उन्नीस उर्दू नंबर्स फ्रॉम वन टू वन हंड्रेड आर क्वाइट इरेगुलर विद नो डेफिनेट पैटर्न सो द ओनली वे टू लर्न देम इज टू मेमोराइज देम It might seem daunting at first but you will soon recognize a rough pattern. Now here are the rest of the tens. 70 While you have to memorize many of the numbers, there is a trick that will make memorizing them easy. Notice that 30 is 30 and 40 is 40. 
Do you remember what three and four are in Urdu? Well, let me remind you. Three is teen and four is char. As you can see, the sound T of teen, which is three, is used in tees or thirty. Teen, tees. Similarly, the sound cha in char, which is four, is used in chalis or forty. Char, chalis. Do you see other similarities? Five in Urdu is panch, while fifty is pachas. The common sound is pa. Unfortunately, this does not apply to all numbers. Sixty in Urdu is saat, while six is che. As you can see, there is no common sound. The last thing to learn in this lesson is how to form compound numbers above twenty. You already know that the number patterns in Urdu are quite irregular. So you might be wondering if you have to memorize each and every compound number. The answer is yes, you do. However, we are going to make your life a little bit easier with this brilliant tip. For any number between twenty and ninety-nine, you will say a variation of the numbers one to nine, followed by the tens. Let's try it out. How would you say thirty-four in Urdu? You first say a variation of four, followed by a variation of thirty. So thirty-four is literally read as four thirty, which is chontis. Here, chon is a variation of the number four or char. And tees is a variation of thirty. John tees. Sixty-one is iksat, which is literally read as one sixty. Ik is a variation of ek for one, while sat is a variation of sat for sixty. Ik sat. Let's look at one more number, ninety-five. In Urdu, it is pachanve. Which is literally read as five ninety. Pacha is a variation of panch for five, and navve is a variation of navve for ninety. Pacha navve. Now it's time for Afra's advice. Did you get until number ninety nine? Here is another number you might want to know. Saw. Saw. That's one hundred in Urdu. Congratulations! Now you are able to count to a hundred in Urdu. In the next lesson, we are going to put your number knowledge to use. Do you have all the skills you need to go shopping in Pakistan? If not, I'll be waiting for you in our next three minute me Urdu lesson. Fir milenge. Assalamualaikum. मेरा नाम अफ्रा है. Hi everybody, my name is Afra. Welcome to Urdu Pod 101.coms. Three minutes में Urdu, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Urdu. In the last lesson, you learned how to count in Urdu. I hope you spent some time practicing the numbers because they will come in handy in this lesson. You are going to learn how to go shopping in Pakistan. Before we go, you need to know how to say how much is this. Iska dam kya hai? Iska dam kya hai? Are you ready to go shopping in Pakistan? Let's go. You see something you like and want to ask the shopkeeper how much it costs. The first thing to say to a shopkeeper is maaf kijiye. Do you remember what that means? Excuse me. Maaf kijiye. Iska dam kya hai? Excuse me. How much is this? Maaf kijiye. Iska dam kya hai? If you want to be more specific when asking how much is this and refer to a certain type of object, you just need to insert the object in between the word iska between. Is and ka. Let's see an example. Suppose you want to buy a hat in the market. Hat in Urdu is topi. So, how much is this hat? In Urdu is is topi ka dam kya hai? 
इस टोपी का दाम क्या है बट वॉट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू बाय सेवरल थिंग्स देन यू वुड हैव टू यूज अ न्यू वर्ड इन का विच मीन्स दीज एक्सक्यूज मी हाउ मच आर दीज इन उर्दू इज माफ कीजिए इनका दाम क्या है माफ की जिए इन का दाम क्या है एट दिस पॉइंट द शॉप क्लर्क कैन आंसर बाय सेंग इसका दाम द प्राइज देन है और ये द प्राइज देन का है फॉर एग्जाम्पल इसका दाम पचास रुपये है ये पचास रुपये का है वट नंबर इज पचास आई एम नॉट टेलिंग यू ओके ओके इट्स फिफ्टी सो ऑल टूगेदर दिस मीन्स इट कॉस्ट फिफ्टी रुपीज नाउ इट्स टाइम फॉर अफराज एडवाइस अनादर वेरी कॉमन वे ऑफ आस्किंग हाउ मच इज इट इज ये कितने का है एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू बी मोर स्पेसिफिक एंड मैंशन द थिंग यू वॉन्ट टू नो द प्राइज ऑफ ऑल यू नीड टू डू इज इंजर्ट द ऑब्जेक्ट आफ्टर ये ये सेब कितने का है विच मीन्स हाउ मच इज दिस एपल एट दिस पॉइंट कैन यू काउंट रुपीज इन उर्दू वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न हाउ टू डू दिस एंड मच मोर इन द नेक्स्ट लेसन आई बी वेटिंग फॉर यू इन आवर नेक्स्ट तीन मिनट में उर्दू लेसन फिर मिलेंगे असलम मेरा नाम अफरा है हाई एवरीबडी माई नेम इज अफरा वेलकम टू उर्दू पॉड वन ओ वन डॉट कॉम्स तीन मिनट में उर्दू the fastest easiest and most fun way to learn urdu in the last lesson you learned the phrase iska naam kya hai meaning how much is it in this lesson let's take a look at how you might answer that question by counting rupees in urdu in pakistan the currency is the pakistani rupee but in urdu we call it rupaya let's try to say prices in urdu Start by trying to say twenty-six rupees, chhabis rupee, chhab, bees rupee. This is really straightforward. First, we say the number followed by rupee. There is only one simple catch. For all the numbers except one, you use the plural form rupees, which is rupee, rupee. For one, you use the singular form rupee. which is rupaya rupaya so 1 rupee in urdu is 1 rupaya 1 rupaya the pakistani rupee uses coins for 1 2 and 5 rupees and bank notes for higher denominations the highest being 5000 rupees on the other hand the smallest denomination is 1 rupee meaning there are no cents used in pakistani currency let's see some more examples of currency 87 rupees is 87 rupees sat ta si rupees ready for another example 44 rupees is 44 rupees cha wa li rupees now it's time for afra's advice Often you will hear people saying paise instead of rupee. Although this might sound confusing, it's simply another way of referring to money. You should ask your friends in Pakistan if they want to go shopping with you to practice these phrases. But first you will have to check if they have other plans or not. Do you know how to do that in Urdu? If not, I'll see you in the next lesson of 3 minute mein Urdu. Phir milenge. Assalamu alaikum mera naam Afra hai Hi everybody my name is Afra welcome to urdupod101.com 3 minute mein urdu the fastest easiest and most fun way to learn urdu in the last lesson you learned how to count rupees did you practice at home 
In this lesson, we are going to learn useful phrases to talk about your schedule. For example, how do you ask your friend, what are you doing this weekend? Since you are asking a friend, we'll use the informal form. Let's start. To ask a male friend, say, Tum is hafte ke aakhir mein kya kar rahe ho? Tum is hafte ke aakhir mein kya kar rahe ho? And to ask a female friend, say, Tum is hafte ke aakhir mein kya kar rahi ho? Tum is hafte ke aakhir mein kya kar rahi ho? Let's break it down. Tum is the informal way of saying you. Is hafte ke aakhir mein means this weekend. Next is me, which means in. After that comes the question word kya, meaning what. And finally we have kar rahe ho, meaning are doing. This is used when addressing a male. When addressing a female, we use kar rahi ho. Now what if you need to ask this question in a formal situation? It's very easy. We did it in lesson 4, remember? First, turn tum into aap, the formal pronoun for you. Then just change ho to he because it's referring to aap instead of tum. Everything else stays the same. So when asking a male, you would say, aap is hafte ke aakhir mein Kya kar rahe hain? Aap is hafte ke aakhir mein kya kar rahe hain? And when asking a female, you would say, Aap is hafte ke aakhir mein kya kar rahi hain? Aap is hafte ke aakhir mein kya kar rahi hain? What if you are not asking about this weekend? Asking about a different time period is as easy as replacing is hafte ke akhir with another time period at the conjunction may with an appropriate one. Let's try it. Say you want to ask about a weekday, like peer, Monday. Here you will use the conjunction ko meaning on. So it would be aap peer ko kya kar rahe hain for a male and aap Peer ko kya kar rahi hai for a female. What about tomorrow? Tomorrow is kal. In this case, you don't need a conjunction anymore. So you can just say, Aap kal kya kar rahi hai for a male and Aap kal kya kar rahi hai for a female. Now it's time for Afra's advice. So if someone asks you, Tum kal kya kar rahe ho? Or tum kal kya kar rahi ho? How can you answer? Here's an example. Me daftar ja raha hu if you're a male, and me daftar ja rahi hu if you're a female. This means I am going to the office. Feel free to replace daftar office with any other location. In this lesson, we learned how to talk about your schedule. Next time, we are going to learn how to use the verb hona, meaning to be. We'll also talk about how to tell people your nationality. I'll be waiting for you in the next 3 minutes with Urdu lesson. Phir milenge. Want to transform your driving time into language learning time? How much time do you spend in your car every day? 30 minutes? More than an hour? Why not put this huge amount of time to good use? Instead of just listening to the radio during your daily commute, you could be learning a new language instead. Here are three easy methods for learning a language in your car. You can put them to use right away with the help of our language learning program. First, you can listen to fun audio lessons by real teachers. Listening to lessons while in the car allows you to focus on the road as you listen and learn. In every one of our three to 15 minute lessons, our teachers teach you conversations, new phrases, and cultural points. Audio is the only learning medium that lets you learn and drive safely at the same time. So take advantage of all our audio lessons available. Second, you can set your lessons on autoplay and go hands-free. Our autoplay feature lets you keep your hands on the wheel without even reaching for your device. 
just set your lessons to autoplay one by one with our Innovative Language 101 app and never have to interrupt your focus on driving to switch to a new lesson. Third, you can repeat out loud and speak from your very first lesson. You want to speak a new language too, right? Well, you'll start learning conversations minutes into your lessons. All you have to do is listen and repeat out loud. Our teachers take you step by step through all of the words, phrases, translations, and grammar points. You're even prompted to speak out loud and repeat. The result? You understand it all and can speak your new language. Turn your commute into language learning time and have fun at the same time. Learning doesn't have to be a big commitment, like signing up for a college class. It can be fun and easy. In fact, it's as easy as pressing play. Our language learning programs will do the work for you. And with the exposure you get while driving on your daily commute, you'll be speaking and understanding real life language quickly. The best part? You can finally learn without even changing your schedule. So if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Urdu. Hi everybody, my name is Afra. Welcome to the 800 core Urdu words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Urdu. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you have learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at urdupod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Urdu. Okay, let's get started. First is Aj. Today. Aj. Aj. Today. Aj Garmi hai. Today it's hot. Aj Garmi hai. Kal. Yesterday. Kal. Kal. Yesterday. Maine kal chutti ki. I took a day off yesterday. Maine kal chutti ki. Kal. Tomorrow. Kal. Kal. Tomorrow. Kal meri saal gira hai. Tomorrow is my birthday. Kal meri saal gira hai. Hafta. Week. Hafta. Hafta. Week. Ek hafte mein saad din hote hai. There are seven days in a week. Ek hafte mein saad din hote hai. Saal. Year. Saal. Saal. Year. Main agle saal wapis a jaunga. I'll be back next year. Main agle saal wapis a jaunga. Second. 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 Ek second ruke. Mera khayal hai, aap se koi cheez nazar andaz ho gai hai. Wait a second. I think you may have overlooked something. Ek second ruke. Mera khayal hai. Aap se koi cheez nazar andaz ho gai hai. Minute. 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 Ek minute me saat second hote hai. There are 60 seconds in a minute. Ek minute me saat second hote hai. Ganta. Hour. Ganta. Ganta. Hour. 
मैं हर रोज आठ घंटे सोता हूं आई स्लीप फॉर एट आवर्स एवरी डे मैं हर रोज आठ घंटे सोता हूं घड़ी क्लॉक घड़ी घड़ी क्लॉक घड़ी दीवार पर लटक रही है द वॉल क्लॉक इज हैंगिंग ऑन द वॉल घड़ी दीवार पर लटक रही है बजे ओ क्लॉक बजे बजे ओ क्लॉक चलो नौ बजे स्टेशन पर मिलते हैं लेट्स मीट एट द स्टेशन एट नाइन ओ क्लॉक चलो नौ बजे स्टेशन पर मिलते हैं कैलेंडर 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 मैंने कैलेंडर पर हमारी शादी की सालगिरह का निशान लगा दिया है आई मार्क्ड आवर एनिवर्सरी ऑन द कैलेंडर मैंने कैलेंडर पर हमारी शादी की सालगिरह का निशान लगा दिया है पीर मंडे पीर पीर मंडे हफ्ते में काम का दिन पीर से शुरू होता है द वर्क वीक स्टार्ट ऑन मंडे हफ्ते में काम का दिन पीर से शुरू होता है मंगल ट्यूजडे मंगल मंगल ट्यूजडे यकम जनवरी इस साल मंगल को आएगा जनवरी फर्स्ट फॉल्स ऑन अ ट्यूजडे दिस ईयर यकम जनवरी इस साल मंगल को आएगा बुध वेनेसडे बुध बुध वेनेसडे हम बुध की रात मेरे घर पर पोकर खेलते हैं वेनेसडे नाइट वी प्ले पोकर एट माई हाउस हम बुध की रात मेरे घर पर पोकर खेलते हैं जुमेरात थर्सडे जुमेरात जुमेरात थर्सडे आप जुमेरात को क्या कर रहे हैं वॉट आर यू डूइंग ऑन थर्सडे आप जुमेरात को क्या कर रहे हैं जुमा फ्राइडे जुमा जुमा फ्राइडे जुमा के मनसूबा जात कैलेंडर पर लिखें राइट द प्लान फॉर फ्राइडे ऑन द कैलेंडर जुमा के मनसूबा जात कैलेंडर पर लिखें हफ्ता सैटरडे हफ्ता हफ्ता सैटरडे हफ्ते के दिन के लिए कोई मंसूबा नहीं नो प्लान फॉर सैटरडे हफ्ते के दिन के लिए कोई मंसूबा नहीं इतवार संडे इतवार इतवार संडे इतवार को फादर्स डे है संडे इज फादर्स डे इतवार को फादर्स डे है करना डू करना करना डू मेरे पास करने को बहुत सा काम है आई हैव सो मच वर्क टू डू मेरे पास करने को बहुत सा काम है जाना गो जाना जाना गो मैं स्कूल जाता हूँ आई गो टू स्कूल मैं स्कूल जाता हूँ Remember the goal of this series is to build a vocabulary of the 800 most common words and phrases in Urdu. 
If that sounds like a lot, don't worry, we can help you. Click the link in the description to access the full list. You will also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and most learning resources at urdupod101.com. See you next time. Alvida. Expand your vocabulary with our Core 2000 Words eBook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Urdu eBook before it's gone.